So I've gotten several requests on different uh, questions in regards to um, how I build uh, these particular planters. So I decided to make a video. Uh, in front of us is a completed product. Uh, we'll take a few steps back and I'll kind of go through the steps and the material used uh, to assemble. So um, let's get started. Before we do any cutting, go ahead and pre-mark everything while um, the drums are still fully intact and not as uh, bendable. Uh, if we look here at the top, we're going to cover up these holes and then we'll put four more holes here uh, for drainage on each side. And here basically we have four inch drain pipe and uh, it's cut in half. They came in 10 foot lengths, so each are uh, 5 feet long. And over to this side, we have the support, um, which is half inch conduit, and uh, electrical conduit that is, and it's, um, it's cut into 29 inch joints, which um, if you have a 10 foot joint, which isn't truly 10 feet, but if you divide that into four, you end up with uh, these even pieces, which are uh, more than long enough to go uh, across and give you some excess uh, to trim it. Because each of these drums, after you cut them, none of them are identical. So you would like to leave yourself um, an inch or so of play uh, before you uh, secure it uh, at the base to um, add that additional support and over here um, we have the two tools that is basically needed um, we have a jigsaw with a metal cutting bit uh, more teeth on your your bit uh, cuts to that plastic real easy and a um, half inch unibit which um, will basically uh, be a perfect fit without any trim at each of these crosses and as you can see we'll just rotate this we have them staggered once we make this cut um, I would give you the dimensions but each drum is different so to avoid confusion basically divide everything in half once you get your uh, circumference next step we'll uh, show you the cut product and we'll begin assembly All right, now uh, we have uh, our construction phase one complete with the barrels cut in half. Now we have eight individual containers. And I wanted to point out a couple additional things that I did that I did not, ex did not explain previously. Uh, after the drums were uh, cut in half, uh, I went back with a high-speed grinder and beveled the edge so we wouldn't have any sharp edges because uh, after you shave the filings off it leaves a pretty sharp corner uh, the other thing i wanted to mention is uh you know there's tons of different types of containers why 55 gallon drums um well first and foremost uh i must admit they're not the most aesthetically pleasing to the eye uh, however it does hold up to the uh, environment both UV and uh, water and uh, solely because of that um, I use the 55 gallon drums. We want to take a, a closer look here inside. Uh, the drums have been cleaned multiple times. These particular drums came from a car wash so all they did was house soap but some house chemicals and whatnot so you want to make sure your containers are nicely uh, cleaned with uh, detergent of some sort to get a, any of the chemicals out. Um, also in this phase, I went ahead and I installed caps. That's a total option. Um, I put caps on the uh, inch and a half conduit because um, I don't want any critters getting in the pipes. They'll go ahead and make nests and whatnot. So um, it's an extra expense uh, that's not necessary. You can uh, have something else to block it off. Uh, but once again, I just use the caps. 
Um, here's the caps for the other side. Uh, that's not installed. If we can come around, you'll see we have plenty of length to cut. Um, the other thing I did was I installed caps here on the four inch pipe. Um, and that's very important. Um, and I wouldn't consider that as a non option simply because uh, the wall of this drain pipe is very thin. Once again, this is drain uh, grade PVC sewer pipe. And uh, you could use a traditional Schedule 40 PVC. Um, but I choose to use the, the thinner wall stuff uh, simply because it uh, it's easier to work with. On the next phase, um, we'll be installing the pipe uh, in the drum with the supports and we'll also be wrapping it with burlap for uh, the dragon fruit uh, vine to uh, adhere to as it grows up the trellis. And uh, the other thing I want to point out with these caps why I wouldn't consider it uh, an option it adds the additional thickness on this particular pipe so this uh, this uh, thin wall sewer pipe it gets additional thickness and we're gonna drill right through here a little bit later on to um, to uh, su put the top umbrella support so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish this next phase and then we'll run another video after and we're on to our final phase um, but before we go there let's take a quick look and see what we accomplished so um, what I have here is uh, two rows and uh, I didn't explain this earlier but uh, I put the side with the lids in the front and the side without the lids in the back you could see there's two different shapes uh, the side with the lid does offer a little bit more stability uh, in the event your uh, cuts are not uh, and your holes are not aligned properly the lid uh, does help out significantly um, whereas uh, I've had to put additional support um, on the half of the barrels with uh, without the lid uh, so let's take a closer look uh, these these two here are almost complete um, what I do in uh, my planters is I uh, fill about four inches with a uh, styrofoam in this case I'm using styrofoam peanuts um, and I pack it tightly and then I use a um, compost typically a compost manure um, and I use it hundred percent and it works very well um, dragon fruit really love the compost material and we'll come around here uh, I left a couple undone so you could see here inside exactly how the braces support so what we did uh, since uh, we looked last is uh, all four ends now are terminated with a PVC cap um, you can see I had a template and I used it on all of the four inch pipes I basically just slid the four inch pipe and uh, drew some lines and uh, then I applied the template on top of it. It was real easy, just time consuming. And um, let's, let's come around. On these two, I began the uh, burlap procedure and I used, uh, since I'm doing this by myself, I just used uh, scotch tape to apply um, the first layer just to kind of hold it in place. You can pull it off after. Um, then I used a uh, copper twine. I just have that readily available. You could use tie wraps or whatnot, but it holds it in place pretty well. Um, one one uh, note here. You want to make sure it's wrapped real, real tight, um, depending on where your plant starts. 
I typically like to have my soil line um, at least another 12 inches here so um, it will decompose over the year and you'll need a top dress every year about uh, a, a nice six inches of soil um, but here uh, as the plant grows depending on how big your cutting is and well established it is you want to make sure um, I always try to make sure that I put my cutting and it starts on the burlap otherwise it has a tendency to grow inside which you don't want it to do um, you'll have to end up getting rid of that cutting um, so you want uh, the, the vine to actually grow on the outside where its roots can attach inside here um, I like using burlap because uh, it absorbs water and it actually holds uh, any of the micronutrients that I spray um, it allows a little bit longer feeding time um, and here's another example basically same exact thing and then for the next phase we have the tops uh, I have a standard 3 8 inch uh, rebar and some grading the grading came in uh, 7 foot by 4 foot um, basically just cut it where it was 24 inches by 24 inches and along with uh, the rebar cut them 24 inch lengths which is um, I believe it's four equal cuttings in that joint of rebar and then um, I have a template for the top here and then we'll just mark some holes and uh, we'll have our canopy all set for the the vine to get to the top and we'll look at that in the next video and our tubs are complete now and we'll take a closer look at the last step where we left off we have our two foot rebar drilled across the top of the caps in a cross pattern with the wire mesh sitting on top uh, held in place with some outdoor rated tie wraps and there is one other piece that um, I'm gonna start to install I have put a variation of this um, I've seen in Thailand they use bicycle wheels uh, on, on the top of the umbrella and uh, I've tried garden hoses and other types of rubber hoses that have worked fairly uh, fairly good um, but uh, because of the volume of planters I have I didn't know exactly what resource uh, I could uh, get some material to uh, to stick on top of these planters and uh, I've come up with this this is uh, electrical conduit plastic very lightweight um, it's cut to fit the top and um, basically going to install a coupler here and we're going to use some more of those UV rated tie wraps to hold this in place in the corners and then that'll give um, the umbrella a little bit more support so when it rests it rests on this cool plastic instead of this uh, hard wire mesh that tends to give the plant sunburn um, so it'll give uh, less opportunities for the plant to scar uh, to promote a, a healthier umbrella system and uh, that like I said that's something fairly new that I'm gonna try and um, I'll let you know the results thank you for watching